We are, we are ready to get started. We are the service coming together to worship our Lord and Savior. Praise Him and thank Him for bringing us through 2015. Been some ups and downs, but yeah, we're still here to praise Him and thank Him. So we don't have our praise and worship service, devotion service. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Whoa, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Oh, 
who really sort of say, Eternal God, the maker and creator of all things, the one who sits high and looks low and watches over us day and night, one who never sleeps nor slumber, the ones that always there when we need them. We come now as humble we know how, thanking you and praising you for all that you've done for us. You've been good to us, and we thank you. We come now also, Father, asking that you forgive us for all our many transgressions that we have. We just ask him right now that you forgive us right now. We come now, Father, just thanking you for being, having a mind just to come out to the house of worship to, to thank you and praise you for what you have done for us throughout 2015. Amen. Lord, thank you. You've been good to us. 
we thank you, Father, for your Son, Jesus, who hung, bled, and died on the Calvary cross some 2,000 years ago. Yeah, yeah. But he died for the remission of all our sins. Amen. And you loved us so that you gave the, us the best that you had, your only begotten Son. And we thank you right now. Thank you. We come now, Father, asking that you bless the sick and afflicted, wherever they might be. We know you're already there. We ask that you touch them. Your spirit move among the family, Father, as they go through this sickness. Bless them. Help them to understand that you're there to comfort them in that time of sickness. Watch over them. Protect them, Father. We ask you bless the doctors, the medical care people that are caring and ministering the medicine. We ask that you bless them also. Bless the hospital, the nursing home, wherever that home that they might be in. Bless, bless it all, Father. Touch right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, just touch right now, Father. Because they need you, Father. They can't do anything without you, Father. Just watch over them, Father. We thank you right now, Father, for bringing us through 2015, Father. We know, we know there was some ups and downs. We, we know there was some hard times, Father. And we know that some has left us in you want on home to be with you, Father. But we want to thank you anyhow, Father. Thank you for sustaining us through our sickness and the ups and downs, Father. We ask blessing upon all families this morning, this evening, Father. We know that that's, that's Satan is, is trying to tear your family down, Father. Uh, so many families dysfunction for whatever reason, Father. That we we leave you out of the equation, Father. We forget we can't do it on our own, Father. Because we are not able to do it. We don't have the strength to do it. We don't have the know-how to do it. Because we don't come to study your word, Father, to learn how to raise a family, to keep a family together. But help us to realize that we can't do this on our own, Father, because, because there's so much sin and confusion in the world, Father, just next door in our home that's sin and confusion all around us, Father, that, that we forget about you, Father. Help us to remind us of you, Father, that we need you. We ask God, Father, that you bless the remainder of the service. Bless us as we go into the year 2016. Bless that someone uh, here tonight that don't know you the free part of their sin. When they hear the word of the Lord, Father, that they come running asking, what must I do to be saved, Father? And we'll give you all the glory and all the praise. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening, my Lord. Right, first, I want to ask for your prayer. Uh, my wife lost her father Sunday morning. Amen. So I just ask you to pray for my family. And I'd like to say, Well, it's another day's journey, and I'm glad.
you die, you better die in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You see that it's brought you a mighty long way. I don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. <laughs> Just thankful for the day. I remember when my grandmother now and my auntie them told me, born six months, six weeks premature, mm -hmm. and they sent me home to die. Amen. Because what nothing the incubator and the doctors never could do. Yes, so they called my mother up and said, come get it. There's nothing else we can do. So they sent me home to die. But God had other plans. Yes, yes, my grandmother said a little prayer. Said I wasn't eating. 
she fixed up, she fixed a few concoctions. <laughs> so I'm like Paul. To whatever state of mind that I'm in, I learn to be content. Would you turn with me to John chapter 20? Verse 27, then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Mm -hmm. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my Lord. Jesus said unto him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And I want to use for supporting scriptures, John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And then Romans 10 and 9 says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart, that God, that Jesus died, raised, and was buried, <clears throat> thou shalt be saved. Yeah. I want to talk about just for a few minutes. <laughs> believe. <clears throat> believe. 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 <clears throat> believe. Believe. I looked up the definition to the word believe. says to accept or regard something as true. To accept the truth of what is said by someone. You ever heard the old phrase, you don't believe fat meat greasy? Amen. <laughs> well, let me show you. Amen. Sometimes, sometimes we have a hard time Believe in it, like. Yeah. If you look at our nation, you hear phrases like, do you really believe that? <laughs> Girl, if you had a nerve enough to believe in it, believe me when I tell you this. Amen. But we have times in our life in our days that we have a hard time believing stuff. In the elections, they run, they say, believe me, in order to get your vote. And then when they get in office, they do the opposite of what they say. Well, you did believe in them, and you don't. But I'll stop by here tonight to tell you about somebody that you can believe in. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care whether you're on your high mountain or you're down in the mountain. You can be at 
at your lowest peak. Well. Believe you this, that I know a man that he's able to bring you out of whatever you are in. Believe, believe, believe. Sometimes we put too much belief in one person. And then, when they let you down, you don't want to be bothered with them no more. But, but it, it, it's okay to put some belief in some people, but don't put all of your belief in all the people. Because you can sometimes be let down. But, but if you're going to put your belief in somebody, put your belief in Jesus. Who? Uh, Who? Coming up as a kid, I had a very way about myself about telling stuff to make people believe. Especially in elementary school. I had my own way, Donald, of convincing people that I'm the man. Uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> believe me, and I'll set you free, but just believe. And I had convinced everybody in my school that I had a pink elephant <laughs> on my roof. Amen. Very good. And not only that, Miss Lisa, I, I was selling tickets. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, how good. To the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. I was in the fourth grade, but I was selling tickets to every grade there was. And, and I was selling them for a nickel apiece. Amen. Well, and I told them, after school, follow me. Just believe me. I got a pink elephant. <laughs> On my roof. Three o'clock came past the white. I had about 30 kids behind me. I could see them behind me hanging out the window waiting for me to come across the street. And she said, What have you done this time? <laughs> this time. And somebody said, uh, He got us believing that he's got a pink outfit. On this roof. Well, you know what happened, don't you? Yeah. She made a believer out of me. Amen. I, I wasn't the idea that I didn't have a pink elephant on my roof. I knew that, but the idea was I had to give all the money back. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Even then. But let me tell you about somebody that you can't believe in. Somebody that is a, a mind revelator. He's a, a heart sensor. He's a he's a uh, 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 he can heal the hearing and the deaf and, and the lame and the blind. Let me tell you somebody that you can believe in, and his name is Jesus. Yes, sir. Here it is the text says that Thomas said, I won't believe unless I see the nails in his hand. He said, I, I won't believe. Unless I see the pierced hole in his side. Yeah. And he said, that's the only way I'm going to believe. But let me tell you something now. Don't be too hard on Thomas. Right. Mm -hmm. Because some of us are like that today. Yeah. Yeah. Unless we see. Uh -huh. But let me close out by saying this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have ever left in life. And he said, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that this who died, buried, and raised thou shalt be saved. I don't know about you, but I wasn't there, Pastor White. All right, all right. But my faith tell me that he died. Yeah. Yeah.
big tube yeah. at. Well, they put little men around him. They, they rolled a big tube ahead of him. And I heard that stay there all day Friday. Uh -huh. All day Friday night. Yeah. All day Saturday. Yeah. Saturday afternoon. Yeah.
Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every wind and every sin which so do which do us so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Most of the time, we like to have something that draws our attention, mm -hmm. and we like to call that the subject of this discussion this evening. And for a, a subject matter, let's just think about it. how to ruin the race that is set before us in 2016. How to run the race that is set before us in 2016. We could actually <coughs> sum it up in three different words. Perseverance, persistence, and a good old stick to it. Amen. We often start things ideas, and we don't stick to it. We start over here, and we move on over there, 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 and do not get back to the place where we started. We just uh, oftentimes just, just go haphazardly, it seems like it would be haphazardly, doing this, that, that, and that, and not getting this done. We, we are to, to Stick to it and get this done. Well, what is this? This is perseverance in the fact that we are to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Our scripture comes from the book of Hebrews, and the book of Hebrews was written primarily to the Jewish Christians, whether it was a single congregation or a broader perspective. They were in danger of apostasy. Mm -hmm. what, 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 then what is apostasy? Thank you. Apostasy is a falling away from God's truth. Wow. Uh, Amen. Falling away from God's truth. Yeah, yeah. Not doing what the Bible is directing us to do. Amen. We've seen that happen to our, our, our president. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. We've seen it happen. When he said that two females, two males, it's okay for y'all to get married. But God didn't say that. that, that that's a falling away from God's truth. The condition of apostasy was and is an immediate danger. You don't think so, do you? Let things keep going the way they're going. And then when you wake up in the morning, you might not wake up on this side. See? You might wake up on the other side because you're the come and got you. Mm -hmm. Or come and got somebody Amen. laying next to you. Amen. All right. Apostasy is based on what? Unbelief, bad conduct, neglect of public worship, weakness in prayer. Instability in doctrine, yeah. refusal to teach each other, and neglect to read and study the scriptures. For Paul tells us that we should study to show ourselves approved, a workman unto God, who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Sometimes we even neglect to preach the truth. We should have coded it. And to, and to get along with people. Wow. Rather than tell people what they mean. God can't say it. God said, tell it. Like it is. Like it is. Through the reasoning of this letter, the readers are 
led to consider Jesus as his high priest. Wow. Mm -hmm. To consider him in his priesthood and his sacrifice. Mm -hmm. yes, wow. the, the contrast drawn throughout the letter establishes conclusively okay. the superiority of Christ over angels, the superiority of Christ over Moses, the superiority of Christ over Aaron, and we know how, how these guys did. We know how they, they uh, Moses held up and robbed at God's uh, command, and the sea of uh, Red Sea parted, and they walked across on the ground. we understand that. Moses was somebody, but he was nobody without God. The superiority of Jesus over the Levitical system. And finally, over the, the, the greatest example of the faith life that the Old Testament recorded. And the Old Testament records all, as a matter of fact, the New Testament records all types of faith examples Amen. that you can name. Amen. All right? The author of Hebrews is unknown. But most of the theologians lean toward the uh, Pauline as, as, as being the author of yes, Hebrews. Yes. The author said the scripture as a as said this scripture as a runner in a race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In this race, we must lay aside every weight yes. that's so easy to be set up. And some runners use ankle weights when they're practicing and getting ready for their, their main event. Wow. Some use ankle weights and wrist weights. Yes, sir. That are holding them back so they can build up the muscles yeah. so that they can yeah. run the race. Yeah. Yeah. So, so while they're practicing, they're building muscles while they're practicing, they're getting ready. But we don't have those practices in there. Yeah. What we're going to do, we're going to do for God now. Yeah. We should be able, we should be striving to do our best for him as we go down this road of life. So we can, so we can take off, we, we should be able to take off every weight, every sin that so easily beset us. What I mean by that is every sin that, that slowed me down, every sin that sidetracked me, every sin that makes me want to go to the left, makes me want to go to the right, instead of going down the straight and narrow. So we can run the race. Sometimes we have to turn off the television. Amen. Sometimes we have to turn off the cell phone. Sometimes we have to turn off the computer. Yeah. And, and what we do when we turn these things off, we have to turn something on. <laughs> what we ought to turn on is the scripture. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so Paul said to Timothy, study. study. So if you're going to study, you've got to open up the scriptures to be able to study. Yeah. 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 Not only are we admonished to, admonish to take off every weight, but also every sin yeah. that turns us, that surrounds us, and that, that won't draws us away from the mark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, it was the things that we like or we used to like. Yes, sir. Sometimes it is the people who live around us. Sometimes it is the things that we want or that we don't want to do. I don't want to go to Sunday school, but I ought to go. Amen. I, 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 before I, before I, I really accepted God's call, I ran. I shouldn't have ran. But he caught up with me. He didn't have to catch up with me. He knew where I was. He knew where I was all the time. But what happened, he put me down flat on my back and all I could do was look up and call on God Almighty. We have to distance ourselves from those persons who would like to gossip. Sometimes these conversations of gossip leads to Somebody else's detriment. Yeah. Wow. We have to run the race in Jesus' name. Yeah. Look into Jesus, the author and fixture yes. of our faith. Yes. Hebrews 11 1 tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, yes. and the evidence yes. of things not seen. Yes. Yes. Hebrews tells us, Now faith. Abel offered up unto God a more excellent sacrifice than the brother. By faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Enoch was translated that he should not see death. God translated him 
before he was translated, mm -hmm. he had this testimony that he pleased God. Yes. Yes. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yes. Are you pleasing God today? Yes. Or are you trying to please self? Wow, wow, wow. <clears throat> By faith. Abraham, when he was tried, he offered up his son, his only son, Isaac. By faith, we must believe John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. By faith, if we are going to run this race in 2016. Wow. And come out of winter at the finish line. We must believe that one Friday, yes. Jesus was led up Calvary Hill, yes. nailed to an old rugged cross, yes. stretched wide and lifted high, yes. placed between two things. Yes, one of them said, If you be the Christ, yes, why don't you come down and, and, and save me and yourself too? Yes. But the other one said, Why don't you just leave this righteous man alone? Yes. But he's done nothing to deserve what he's given. Yeah. But we do. But Jesus, he stopped now. And he told this one man. Because he asked him a question. He said, when you get to your kingdom, all I want you to do is to remember me. Lord, just remember me. I, I'm here. I'm a lonely stranger. All I want you to do is remember me. Not tomorrow, but this hour, thou shalt be with me. Where in paradise? <laughs> be with me in paradise. And then he laid his head in the box of the show. The Bible said, that. I didn't say. That. He died yes, sir. until the sun. Well, they took him down off the cross. They placed him in a bar or two. Well, he stayed in that tomb all night, Friday night. Uh -huh. All day Saturday. All night, Saturday night. But early on Sunday morning, Amen. before the bird could sing his good morning song, yeah. early Sunday morning, yeah. while the Jew was still on the road, yeah. early Sunday morning, yeah. Jesus got up yeah. yes, yes, with yes. all power of heaven and earth in his hand. At 16. Yes, sir. You want to go through 2016 with Jesus on your heart. Yeah. With Jesus on your mind. Yeah. With Jesus being your life. Yeah. With Jesus is the only way to go through 2016. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
testimony? Anyone else? What testimony? The Lord has brought you from a mighty long way. The old, old city of the car said, He's not on the not only brought me a long way, he brought me off. Amen. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen.
I'm alive and well. Yes, he did. He'll be close. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
poor. He brought me from the dope house to the church now. Say that. Say that. Say that. Say that. Say that. He brought me from that second pew to the back door as an usher. He brought me to the front seat as a deacon. And he brought me to the pool. Amen. 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 So when I look back over my life, I know what God I should, but not go up to the house of God. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of the food. For they consider not that they believe. Be not rash with the mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou art on earth. Therefore, let thy word be you. For a drink cometh through the multitude of business. And a fool of voices known by the multitude of words. When thou bowest a vow unto God, to fear, to, to fear not to pay it, for he has not pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldst not vow than thou should vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angels that it was an heir. Wherefore should God be angry at the voice and the spirit of voice of my Why lie to God? <laughs> Amen. Then we turn around and we limp in the prayer. 
great. We, 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 we run the church on Sunday morning and we're supposed to be worshiping. But we're want to see what Gip's going to be wearing. Amen. Or we want to see what Sally Susie's got on this one. Mm -hmm. yes, we sir. come in with the wrong package. Amen. Uh, worship. If, if, if I come through the doors to worship God and I have unconfessed sin, I cannot worship him in the way he needs to be worshipped. It, it, it's useless worship. Mercy. Uh, it's empty. And a lot of times we leave out of worship in a worse shape than we did when we came to Amen. Amen. Our word is a <coughs> We say, but we tell us, I'm going to praise the Lord this morning. And we come in and we say,
might say to your wife, your husband, or your children, God hears that vow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he's, right. he's, he's in heaven. And when he's in heaven, he hears everything we say. Yeah. You might fool me, but you can't fool God. Yeah. God hears it all. God knows your heart. Look at, look at, look at uh, Ananias and Sapphira. Yeah. <coughs> they vowed to sell a portion of their land. Yeah. And they were supposed to give it all and lay it on the apostles' feet. And they brought some of it. Yeah. And they had everybody believe they gave yeah. their all. Yeah. But yeah. Peter knew. Well, I, well, I, the Holy Spirit told him. Well, I, no, I, no, I, that ain't right. Yeah. Uh, and he questioned them. Yeah. And they lied again. Yeah. They lied and lied and he fell dead. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here comes his wife. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and he asked her. And she lied again. Yeah. Because they had it worked out. They knew what they told them. Well, if they asked you, you tell them. Okay. Okay. The people that took your husband to his grave, they're at the door. What do you want to do? Now, see, the big thing there is God gave them a chance to clean it up. And they didn't even clean it up. They lied again. So he took them out. Now, I'm not saying God took you out, but he might. Yeah. You don't want to mess with what is God. And see, what we got to get in our minds, what we need to realize is whatever we have is on loan to us. It don't belong to you. You don't belong to yourself. You belong to God. Even if you, even even if you're not a believer, you still belong because he created you. Yeah. He's calling. See, what we got to realize is God, Jesus kept his back. He said, I came to say He's going to be saved. He told the disciples, he said, I must suffer. And he went to Calvary. And they hung him high and they stretched him out. Yeah, yeah. And then he died. Yeah. Come on. <clears throat> see, oh. see, a lot of people got this messed up. They, they think because they, they pierced him in the side and and they beat him unrecognizably that they killed him. No, he died. And he said, I will die. And you won't take my life. I will die. He died. And they put him in a wrong man's Alright. As Kim said, they put a rock in front of a rock. And they put the rock in a rock. And they put a rock in front of a rock. And then when they come back on the third day, they came back. He's risen. God has raised him from the dead. And he's alive today. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he's intercessing for everyone. And he's sitting there waiting for me. He, he, he tells me, come to me, all ye that labor and heavy land, and I will give you rest. Rest for your soul. You can't, you can't carry that burden. You can you can carry it, but you can't do nothing with it. You have to lay that burden. Lay that way to man, that, that sin. You got to get rid of it. You got to get rid of it. You can't get it. There's somebody here today that needs Jesus. We all need it. There's somebody here that needs Jesus. And he's asking right now to come to him. Come to him. His arms are wide open. And, 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 and even though he's not on the cross no more, his arms are still wide open. And there's room at the cross yeah. for you and me. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox. Yeah. Mr. Fox. Yeah. Mr. Fox. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's have a question. Why lie to Because he already knows. Yeah. Yeah. He is omniscient. Because yeah. he knows everything. Yeah. Yeah. So this time, when the demons are coming, we want to put the chairs up and give you an opportunity to respond on the strength of these three messages. Mm -hmm. Gibson and Priest Belief. Yes. John 20, John 3 16, and Romans 10. Mm -hmm. Tate preached Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, one of my favorite passages. Mm -hmm. We're going to run the race in 2016.
that often time. <laughs> that's when it happened. Boom, boom, boom. I thought I was a funeral. I got Tracy Van Boy. I got Tracy that we have. No have mercy on the, on the, the number of folks in the congregation. So, uh, so on the strength of these three messages, uh, as we stand, if you're here today, you've never given your life to Christ. And you know, because the Spirit bears with you with your Spirit. Salvation is so radical that you can't not know you can say it. It's just that. It's like, I know my name. Uh, you call me at 3 in the morning, I'll tell you my name. But you call me at 3 in the morning, I'll let you know I'm saved. And how I say it? It's just that radical. You might not remember the day, and I remember the day. The day was December 12, 1969. The time was 9 o'clock p.m. And the place was at the old Second Baptist. After the benediction, because I didn't know when the door of the church opened when I turned around looking at us and blocked. I didn't know church. I didn't know church. And so I went up after the benediction. Me and Mary Price got baptized the 14th of December in the cold water. First convert of the late Reverend O.W. Robin. Now, some of you might not remember all that vivid detail. But you ought to remember if you're saved. Yeah. And if you don't remember, you need to be like the young man did who was struggling with salvation. And so he went around the side of a barn and the Lord was taking him around. And there, prayed to receive Christ. And every time the devil started messing with him, he went back to that state and said, No, I'm praying to receive him right here. Mm -hmm. And so you might have to drive a stake tonight on when you gave it after Christ. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to leave earth, because you know we keep on leaving. You don't want to leave outside of the will of God and outside of salvation. You know, there's no changing anything. As Donald said, there's no instant replay in life. And there's no such thing when you're dead, you're done. You have a destination. There's no purgatory. There's no holding place. Nobody's going to pray you out of some mid, mid place. It's heaven or hell. Here. So as you stand, <clears throat> if you're here today and you say, well, I'm saved, uh, but I'm not, I don't have a church on me. There are two, three churches represented here. And we will recommend you, if you don't want to be a part of either one of these, we'll recommend you to one that teaches the Bible. Now I will say this for me. I'm not going to send you somewhere where they're not teaching the word of God. They're not preaching the word of God with proper folk. That's the thing we be doing. I'm just going to leave that right there. You can take whatever you want. I'm not going to recommend you somewhere where I wouldn't go. Let me just put it that way. Make it easy. Amen. And if you want to go to something, that's okay. That's what you want to do. But I'm not going to be, I'm not going to have that on my conscience to send you somewhere where there's false teaching. Amen. I know we have some strong teaching at second. I know we have that Mount Olive, uh, Mount Moriah, you know, a lot of our sister churches that are here. Uh, and so I can't, uh, what's it, the original church that? Yeah, so, so I, can't, I can't send you just anything. Um, but I will recommend some places if you don't want to be here for a second word. So if you don't have a church home, uh, and then finally if you're here and you say, I'm saved, I have a church home, but I'm not sure if I were to die today, the danger of not knowing may be that you may not be. And the danger of not knowing and may not be, mean you don't want to wake up at the great white throne judgment. And God looks at you and say, depart from me. I don't know. And you done frequented all the churches in town and visited and you gave three or four dollars here and, and you, you went to an anniversary and you went to a musical and you somebody sung your grandmother favorite song and you cried and all. That ain't gonna do nothing at the great white throne judgment. <laughs> Don't mean nothing. Whole lot of people are going to be crying at the great white throne judgment that's going to hell. So now is the opportunity. If you're not sure, we have people in this congregation who can share with you from the word of God how you can know for sure if you were to die today, you would. This is the record. God has given us eternal life. This life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life.
that these things have I written to you that believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know. A lot of people say you, you can't know. You can know that you have eternal life. So if you're here today, before we pray in this new year, you can make a new start. You can start all over. I think the old song, old secular song, says starting all over again. Because it's going to be rough or whatever, we're going to make it.
Amen.
the perseverance of us, and that you would just hold us in the hollow of your hand as you've been for so many years. There are many, many of us who have been sick, many of us who have family members and friends who have gone on before us. We pray that you give us the comfort that you only you have because we know that you are the God of comfort. Yeah. We pray for uh, thanksgiving for those family members who have been sick that you heal. Yeah. They've come home from the hospital. We don't yeah. take those for granted. We thank you for those. Yeah. Let's pray that as this new year comes that we renew our commitment to you. Yes. That we be more pliable and useful in your hands yes. to do your work. Yes. To not sit around and Look at others, see what others are doing, uh, and depend on others to do for us what we ought to do for ourselves and for you. There are people dying and going to hell. Lord, yes, yes. You seem to not be concerned. We just pray that you give us that word for those who are lost. Yes. Help us to reach out to them with the gospel that can save them from an eternity without you. I pray that you give us holy boldness and just do your call. That you help us to focus on the work of the church uh, instead of church work. Yes. Help us to, uh, to reach out and to be uh, a vessel used by you and my Lord. We pray for these who are here around the altar. And again, for those, there's so many families in bereavement. That we just pray a, a special blessing on so many, the Wade family. Weaver family, uh, the Wright family, the Hope family, uh, and there's so many more. The, the Davis family, the Calhoun family. Seems like the list has just gone on and on. And, on. Uh, and we just pray that you give comfort to them uh, in the time of bereavement. We pray that as we leave this place and go to our various destinations, that you allow us to have traveling grace. We know it's not because we're such good drivers, but it's because of your grace and mercy that allows us to get where we're going. Oh, there are, there'll be some people out tonight who are on the Saints team, and they're out for no good reason. But we pray that you help us to be able to arrive safely. And then as we move forward to this coming Sunday morning, that we would be in good number of worship to start off the new year in the right way. Praising you and giving you glory for your name, because you're worthy to be praised. We just praise you. We love you. We lift your name on high. The psalmist said, oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And so we just come praising you for your excellence. Praising you because you are such a wonderful God. You look after us and you keep up with us. Helped us through all these many years, and we just we praise you. No wonder the song says, "Why do you think about man? What is man that thou art mindful of him? We're mindful of you because as we look up in the sky, we see your handiwork, and we just praise you. We love you. We thank you. Thank you that you've taken us from the old year to the new year. We pray that you walk with us in this year, as Carrie said. If you just order our steps. Yes. We know we're walking the right path. Yes. In Jesus' name, we pray yes. for His sake. Amen. 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 Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you for the food that's been prepared downstairs in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.